Hey everybody, welcome back. So I'm out in the Rocky Mountains once again, southwest of Calgary, Alberta. It's the end of January and I got another stove to show you. Now this one is similar to some of those that I've done in the past and that it's made out of galvanized furnace duct end caps, but there's a little bit of a twist. It's a takedown version. Now I've done that in the past as well. A lot of you commented, you know, there are too many nuts and bolts and pieces and things to lose. Uh, so I really tried to make this one as simple as possible. So I think I've come up with something that's going to work. Let's get it unpacked here. Uh, going to spend the night, give it a little bit of a burn test. So as I said in the intro, furnace duct end cap. These are 16 inch. You could use smaller, but I wanted to make this stove as big as possible for the maximum amount of burn time. So I've got four of those. Not too much cutting involved other than the top one. It's got the cutout for the pipe, of course. And the other, uh, the other three, uh, some holes drilled there. I'll explain those uh, separately. But four sides make the firebox. Now, the magic to this stove is actually in the front and back panels. And I use 12 inch furnace duct end caps here. This is the back and this is the front. The front one, of course, incorporating the cutout for the door and the hinged door. This is pre-assembled at home. You don't need to do anything here. Uh, and the legs are incorporated, of course, as you see them there. Now, the thing that holds this together and kind of the magic here, here is the location of the bolts. Uh, quarter inch bolts, top and bottom in the front and back panel. So you'll see a hole there, one there, and in the back panel, the same two holes, top and bottom. Now, if, if you assemble the sides uh, in the right order, uh, those four bolts will hold this stove completely rigid. It's gonna be a little bit tough for me to show you that here tonight, but I did an assembly at home. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna to cut to that footage uh, and you'll see how those things are put together. Okay, so here's a quick view from the top down with the front panel removed. So hopefully you're going to be able to see the pattern. This is the top. This is the bottom. And obviously the two sides. The, the, uh, the bolts go through one in the center here and one in the center there. If you wanted to, you could put two in just to give a little bit more rigidity here. But I chose to do just one. So this bottom panel... Uh, once it's bolted in place, it's uh, preventing <laughs> the uh, the side panels from uh, moving up or down, as is the, this top one. And once the, the front cap is on, overlaid, like the back one is, it prevents these two sides from popping out like that. So... So I thought I would just give you a quick shot of my sleeping arrangements. I grabbed a little bit of gear, six by eight tarp, uh, the remnants of a foil blanket from the last build, um, lightweight sleeping bag, uh, and, and truthfully, it's not that cold out here. Uh, for the end of January, it's not even freezing. Crazy warm temperatures, this kind of a, uh, a warm friction wind that blows over the mountains when the conditions are just right. We call it a Chinook, and uh, it's almost like summer out here. You're hard to believe that just a week ago with the wind chill temperatures were pretty close to minus 50 here so beautiful night to be camping in the mountains uh, great little spot beside a creek here it, it's not ideal from an exposure point of view but uh, it's it's always warm here and the ground is always dry I don't know what it is about just this little tiny spot we've got a berm behind me creek on the other side uh, but it's just perfect and I've always wanted to camp here so I'm doing it tonight. So I just thought I'd do a little bit of a follow up on the stove here this morning. Burned quite well overnight, a couple hours at a time uh, before I had to add any wood. I could put some small pieces in there and it would come to life again. But there seems to be a little bit more smoke coming out the door of, of this stove. And I'm wondering if it's something to do with the, the relationship uh, of the, the length to the width. This is 16 inches, which I haven't built before. The others have been 12 or 14. And uh, I wonder if the fact that the, you know, the pipe exit is a little bit closer to the door um, has promoted a, a little bit better draft in the other version. So this one, uh, even though, uh, you know, the, the door is fairly low at the front, uh, I'm getting smoke coming out the front as soon as I open it. Not a lot I can do about that. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, also a little bit more smoke coming out of these corners. And these joints are as tight as I've ever been able to make them. And I haven't had that issue before. 
So um, might try this version again a little bit smaller. Can reuse the the, the front and rear panels, and uh, I've got some other uh, 12s and 14s that I can uh, just kind of insert into here as well. The other thing is that uh, the cutouts that I've made below the door here in the front, and this other one in the back, I think have weakened the front panel a little bit. Uh, it's not quite as rigid here at the bottom, and when I put the, the bolt right below the door there, uh, I'm getting a little bit of bowing here, which I don't think I would get if I wouldn't have <laughs> cut that out. So what that's doing is it's opening up a little bit of a gap uh, here and here. Not such that I'm getting any ash or um, sp sparks or uh, burning material out of there, but also getting a little bit more smoke leakage. So uh, I think on the next one, I would not cut this panel out. It's going to be a little bit heavier. But I think uh, because I'm only using four bolts, it would be just a little bit more rigid.